Welcome to a Stuart 7A model steam plant. This one is part 33, fitting a globe valve to the water outlet of the steam pump and a strange problem appears on the reversing mechanism of the engine. It is a very cold day in the workshop today and because I make these videos in England, by the term cold I mean about 1 degree Celsius. If you live in Scandinavia, Siberia or Alaska, I would suppose that 1 degree C is quite warm. So what am I doing in the workshop on a very cold day like this? I'm going to fit a globe valve on this pipe that you can see in the foreground. And to do that, the first thing I need is a Jubilee Fittings globe valve, and here it is. And I'm going to fit the globe valve in this position. It could be in this position, or vertical, or the other way, or whatever. Fitting the globe valve is a very easy job. In this clip I've removed both of the union nuts and I'm marking the pipe at about 2.5mm from the end of the globe valve. This is to accommodate the thickness of the front of the union cone. After marking the pipe with the felt tip pen, I cut the pipe on the lines and then I silver soldered two union cones, one on each end of the pipe. At the moment I'm cleaning up the pipe. I use the polishing spindle followed by a bit of brasso. I didn't bother with the acid bath on this occasion because as it's so cold, I thought it would probably be frozen anyway. Another gratuitous shot of the tin of Brasso. I'm sure this stuff used to be called Duraglit. Anyway, it cleaned up the pipe to a satisfactory standard. All I need to do is assemble the two pieces of pipe with the globe valve in between. Very much like this in fact. So now there is a globe valve in between the outlet of the pump and the inlet to either the water bypass or the boiler itself. By now I'm sure some viewers are getting ready to write in and ask me why I've done this, presuming me to be very stupid. The reason for having a valve in line with the water outlet from the pump means you can throttle the pump by this method, which also means that you can leave the steam valve open all the time, because then the cylinder stays warm, and the hydraulic lock of the valve on the outlet stops the pump from moving. Time to have a play. I've fitted the air line to the boiler and I'm feeding it with around 30 pounds per square inch of compressed air. I'll try the engine first. And not unsurprisingly, the engine runs perfectly first time. The pump, however, doesn't seem to want to do anything. I've opened the steam valve and it's not moving. But it is very cold in here. Time for a closer look. In the steam cylinder of the pump and the valve chest, will be steam oil, which is very thick to start with, and it's like treacle at this temperature, very sticky. I'm going to give the pump a chance by squirting a bit of WD-40 on the ram itself, and I'm also applying some WD-40 to the valve rod. This should do the trick, and I'm sure it's going to work very shortly. I thought it might be a good idea to check the position of the valve that I've just fitted on the outlet. It was open, but not very far. When I opened the valve fully, the pump bursts into life. There's hardly any water in the system. I drained the boiler and most of the water tank last week because it was really cold. But there's enough water to pump round the system. Here the pump is pumping back to the tank. It's not a solid column of water. There's quite a lot of air in the pipe. That's why it looks a bit strange. But it's working and for a steam engine to work in such a cold temperature, running on compressed air which makes it even colder, is quite good for such a small device. Later on in the video, a bit of a problem developed with the engine, but I'll stop the narration for a while so you can hear the sound that the steam plant is making. And here's the problem that I've just mentioned. When I move the engine's reversing lever into reverse, the engine doesn't actually run in reverse. At first I thought it must be the 6BA grub screw not biting onto the shaft. So the first thing I did was remove the 6BA grub screw. And then the penny dropped as to what the problem really was. Initially I'd only used Loctite 603 to hold the reversing arm onto the shaft. And this has been fine for quite a while. I did intend to fit a taper pin through the middle of it. So all that's happened is the Loctite's given way, possibly with the low temperature. Normally, to break the seal of Loctite you heat it up, but I suppose you get the same effect if you chill it. I thought I'd mention this because it's something that I'd never thought about. 
It's a quick fix and this really is the last episode in this series. I'd like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.